What's going on, everybody? This is Brian Mazik, a.k.a. Unique Mazik, the hardest working man in sports and gaming. And we got another video of the Ultimate Legends roster for this is for the Atlanta Hawks. It's been a little bit of space between the last video, but then try to pick this back up so we can get this Legends roster out. As you saw on the uh, the thumbnail, we got a, you know, obviously had Dominique Wilkins on the thumbnail, but this is not Dominique Wilkins. This is Bill Bridges. If you're joining in late and new to this Ultimate Legends roster, it is PC only. And these recreated faces or touched up faces that you will see are done by Razor. His information is in the description of the video. Best modder out there, period. Uh, especially in the 2K community. So, like I said, this is Bill Bridges. Bill Bridges. <laughs> Bill Bridges, longtime St. Louis Hulk. Great. Uh, big time defender, rebounder. Very athletic player at only six foot six was playing power forward. Obviously, players were smaller then, but Bridges was an just a an athletic specimen and a dude who was able to impact the game defensively quite a bit. In the best year, he averaged like 17 a game. So he did have some offensive talent, but you're gonna see once we get to the ratings aspect that his offense is not necessarily the best part of his game. It definitely is the defense and the athleticism. So next up, we got Cliff Hagen, one of the highest scoring players in the 50s, 60s era time for the St. Louis Hawks. He could put it in the basket. If you look at clips of Cliff Hagen and you look at like free throw percentage and things like that, you can tell that he was an outside shooter and would be an outside shooter if you kind of morphed him into today's player. So I kind of hooked him up on that end. Not the greatest athleticism, not the greatest leaping ability. A little bit also undersized to play small forward or two. Uh, not so much a two-guard, but small forward for sure. But he can score. Next, you got Dan Roundfield. Razor did a good job here because Dan has a had a very distinct look to him with the thinner head. But I thought Razor did a great job here. This is a, a 70s, 80 player uh, who is uh, extremely athletic, uh, active on the inside, long arms, shot blocker, rim protector, uh, rebounder. Also had a decent post-game turnaround jump shot, a little bit of a mid-range thing, but definitely a rim runner type of a screen and roll kind of guy. So Dan Roundfield's in there. Then, of course, Dominique Wilkins. Now, this Dominique, the original Dominique wasn't horrible, but his eyes were too far apart. And there's some other things that was going on there. Uh, and Razor really touched this up nice. The neek on the right, which is done by Razor, is fantastic. One of the most exciting players in the 80s and 90s. Big time dunker, especially in-game dunker. And a high, high scorer. Putting in buckets. And also an underrated rebounder, too. So I think the year I took, he averaged nine rebounds a game. Next, we got John Drew. One of the... It's kind of like a, a, a tragic story, actually. John Drew was a really good scorer in the early 70s, mid-70s for the Hawks. Ended up getting moved around to a couple different teams. Had some battles with substance abuse. Uh, the last report that I saw on him, which was maybe three or four years ago, he was driving Uber in uh, doing. A, he was an Uber driver in Vegas. So, you know, things did not go as um, as planned or as thought. But he was actually a really good player, really good scorer overall. So John Drew made it in there. Uh, you'll see where he uh, ended up falling on my FPVR top fifteen. Next is Sweet Lou Hudson, one of I think one of the more underrated overall players in that '70s era. Um, actually, I think even back to the late '60s, he could do a little a little bit of everything, but he could really score. Had a really really good jump shot, known for his jump shot. Also, but if you look at the numbers, he got quite a bit of steals too. Good size, athletic for the wing. I definitely think he's the type of player whose game would translate to today. And so he's in there. I'm glad I, I got him in there. And I didn't have the real life picture here on this particular preview from Razor. So I added it here. You can see uh, if you look back and forth at this, look at the one on the right. And then you look at this, you see Razor did a pretty good job bringing him in too. So he's definitely an improvement, much better than the one 2K originally had. Next up, Mookie Blaylock, one of the best defensive point guards in the 90s. Not ever a great scorer, but a really good passer. He actually has run into some problems in his life, too. He, uh, I think he might still be incarcerated for, um, a, I don't know if it was vehicular homicide, but there was something that he was driving and um, 
uh, someone was injured, I think killed. He was actually injured pretty bad in the car crash as well, but was found guilty. So, uh, you know, pray he gets everything together uh, from there. But he was a very good player in the 90s for uh, in early 2000s, I believe, for the Atlanta Hawks. Next up, we got Zelmo Beatty. Zelmo Beatty uh, played a lot of time in the ABA, but in the NBA, he was in his, at his best with the St. Louis Hawks. Uh, another athletic post player, um, really good in transition, much better than you might think in, when you originally just look at him or learn about him. But uh, very, like I said, very athletic. I love this render that uh, Razor did. As you can see, he even got the scar in the left eyebrow. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, just a really good job. And he made my FPVR team as well. All right. So now let's look at the list of the FPVR, the players who made the roster before we switch it out and then look at the ratings for everybody for the Atlanta Hawks. And then after that, I'm going to show you some gameplay with the Atlanta Hawks taking on the Detroit Pistons. So that's the last all-time team that I completed. So at the top of the list is Bob Pettit. Uh, he still is the most accomplished uh, player that ever played in the, uh, in the Hawks organization. And he's got a pretty good lead over Dominique Wilkins. So obviously both are retired. So that's going to be kind of it for the top two, unless somebody comes up, uh, which is that person's, you know, may or may not be on the team as of right now. But right now, Bob Pettit and Dominique Wilkins are number one and two. I told you how good Cliff Hagen was in his career. I took the 59-60 season for him. He's number three. I also told you how good Lou Hudson was. He's at number four with 73-74, uh, the 73-74 uh, the season. Then we have Bill Bridges at 66-67 season. Uh, Lenny Wilkins, really good defensive player, overall player for uh, for the Hawks and then the Sonics. He's in there. I uh, took the 67-68 season. Man shall not fly in the house of Mutombo. The 99-2000 Matumbo was a, I mean, every year he was a fierce defender, fierce shot blocker, a little bit better in the post than people think, but dynamite. Then we got Joe Johnson, Iso Joe. Uh, Y'all going to probably be mad at the rating that I gave Iso Joe, but he comes in at the 07 08 season. Al Horford, the 12-13 season. Uh, Dan Roundfield, 80-81. Zemo Beatty, 67-68. That late 60s Hawks team should have been pretty good. I mean, you got Bill Bridges, Lenny Wilkins, and Zelmo Beatty right there in that time period. Should have been pretty good. Kevin Willis. Kevin Willis. Now, the <laughs> here's the thing, right? When I give a player a rating in this, I'm giving it to them based on their best season. Kevin Willis had a year for the Hawks where he was insane. I think it was like 18 points, 14 and a half rebounds. He was a monster. So he had a really high rating uh, and he was always pretty athletic and a very good finisher by the basket, even though he had shorter arms and smaller hands. But um, he had a heck of a year. So 91, 92. Then you get Mookie Blaylock, 96, 97. Paul Millsap, the 13, 14 uh, version. And then you got John Drew at 75, 76. Now he's just barely in there, but because there's nobody, there's not really a, like a long tenured player on the Hawks right now. Uh, who, you know, are in position to really threaten him. I think he's okay, and they're not going to the playoffs. So, obviously, with the FPVR, you benefit from individual and team success. Nobody on the Hawks is getting much team, many points for team success right now. So, we'll see how that works. But that rounds out my top 15. So, uh, now we can go and take a look at the ratings. All right, so let's take a look at the ratings. We're going to start off from lowest to the highest. My man, John Drew, uh, was only 21 years old uh, in this particular season that we took. I only gave him a 77. Um, never known as much of a, of, of a defender, uh, pure scorer, um, and not necessarily the most efficient guy outside of the, the lane. So, you know, except if you think about it, I mean, he had a really good surf season. But if you look at the percentages and you look at the uh, the reputation as a defender, which wasn't great, it ended up hurting him. And also, you got to think about it. He's he's classified as a power forward, power forward, small forward. So that rating is based off of him playing at the four. If you put him at the three, the rating goes a little higher for sure. All right. Next, we got Joe Johnson. And like I told you, y'all probably would have something to say about this particular one. 
I gave him an 84. Joe is a fantastic scorer. You know, if you look at the numbers, you can see that I represented that 30, uh, 88 in open three. Uh, the midi, uh, mid range stuff is good. 90 on a mid open mid range. The free throw shooting is good. He can do all that. He's got a good enough athleticism. But Joe was never a really good defender. Just he just never was. He's a scorer. And I think that that's what he's been properly represented as here as a scoring machine. Next, we got Paul Millsap. He's an undersized power forward. Good, really good defender. Um, and a decent three-point shooter. But he's 6'8", playing power forward. So the 84, I think, is is fair. Uh, even on his best season, which is 28 years old with the, uh, with the Hawks. So he settled down at 84. We also have an 84 for Dan Roundfield. A um, little bit of an undersized center, but he should be able to play power forward as well. Uh, but, um, you know, the undersized aspect in in 2K is kind of a big deal. But in basketball, it, it doesn't have to be as big a deal because, you know, you play positionless basketball now. Guys can play 6'8", play, can play center at 6'8", easy without a problem. So that's that's not a big deal. But, uh, yeah, if he's playing against a bigger guy and you're playing against a team that's paint mashing, Dan Roundfield might have a problem. And then you got Al Horford, who can come in and play for him. He's 6'10", 250. He got the 86 overall. Uh, his three-point pr- uh, shooting hadn't quite kicked up yet with the Hawks. We know it was on his way. I think maybe that hurt his rating a little bit, but 86 is still really strong. Zelmo Beatty also got the 86, 6'9", 225, 28-year-old season. Uh, we talked about him a little bit when I was showing the uh, the renders that uh, I still can't get over how good of a render Razor did for this. You would swear that this guy's actually in the game uh, from the beginning. And then we got Cliff Hagen, 87. I gave him the love on the three. 90 open three, 85 on the uh, contested three, 80 on moving. Now, 80 on the moving, I, I really feel like I was kind of generous, but I did see a, a, enough footage of him shooting shots, taking at least a dribble or two. So it wasn't purely spot up stuff. So, um, but then again, we're talking about an entirely different era of basketball. So you do have to give a little bit of a benefit of the doubt if you want the player to be usable at all. And this is, this is not as much about like it, th- making these rosters is kind of weird, right? Because if you went purely on what actually happened, then you essentially nobody from, you know, yesteryear would ever really ever be able to play in the league right now or play in this roster. So if you want to represent people like Will Chamberlain and you want to represent people like Oscar Robinson and even some people from before that, you got to kind of give them a little bit of love here and there and give them give them some credit for being able to evolve into a certain type of player if they were in that time. So we got Mookie Blaylock with the 89. Now, how did Mookie Blaylock get an 89? We got an 89 because he's a good three point shooter. The year I think I took from him, he averaged nine assists a game and like 2.7 steals. Like he, I believe he led the league in steals twice or something to that effect. Just a demon on defense, always known as a really good defender. So if you balance that out and you look at the way that 2K sets up, um, the the way they handle their ratings, the formula, the algorithm that creates it, the the combination of high statistics that he has leads to that type of uh, of an overall rating. So uh, then we got Bill Bridges at the 89. It's the rebounding. And it's the, the athleticism that led to that, even though he's very undersized at six foot six, but he could jump. Like if you watch, if you look at some clips of Bill Bridges and you just look at some images of him in the air and you see how high he is, he could get up. And he was also a really good athlete. So he got some benefits there. I still think he might have a problem in 2K at six, six. Lenny Wilkins coming through. Now, he was in the game already, but they had him on the all-time Sonics. He actually did make the all-time Sonics Thunder team for me, too. But he's coming in with the 89. Would have probably been a little bit better if his three-point shooting was a little higher. But as it is still, with the 89, it's good. Lou Hudson with the 90. I'm telling y'all, you you got to gotta go and look at some Lou Hudson. Lou Hudson could ball, man. He could play. He could play. So he's get, he gets the 90 for being a two-way star. Next, Kevin Willis. Yes, now I know. Like I said, Kevin Willis had that year where he was amazing. And I want to see if I can if I can uh, show you the stats that I'm talking about for the one particular year. And this is what I this is where I took his uh where is it? Here it is. The 91-92 season. 
18 points, 5.2 offensive rebounds a game. That's a lot of second chance points. 15 and a half rebounds, two assists. And like I said, never a great shot blocker. Shot 48% from the field, 80% from the free throw line. He had a heck of a year, y'all. I had to I had to show him some love. He got the 90. Uh, let's see. We go with Dikembe Mutombo getting the 92. Had a he had a killer year. Maybe his best year statistically with the Hawks. He was 33 when he did it too. Uh, but just a great year for Mutombo. He got the 92. Then we got Neek at 93. Hey, he's Neek. Great, ridiculously athletic, great scorer, good rebounder. It's a 93. And then also with the 93, we got Bob Pettit. Now, I gave Bob Pettit a little bit of credit for being a stretch big, but not as much credit as they had given him originally. He was shooting like a 93. It was that was that's a bit much. Like it's a bit much for me to give him that. Definitely a good shooter, but the year I took, he only shot 72% from free throw line. Uh, and overall, his um, his field goal percentage wasn't that that high. Uh, didn't give him a bunch of credit for an athlete, but wasn't a horrible athlete. He was also fairly thin. Still known to be a strong player, but a pretty thin guy at 6'9", 205. So I settled down with a 93 for him. And so they got a good team. They got a good team. So... I'm gonna let you take a look at the um, at the gameplay. Uh, like like usual, it'll just be one quarter. But take a look. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to 2K Sports and another exciting edition of NBA Basketball. Kevin Harlan here, and I'm joined by Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, who's reporting from the sideline. We've got the Detroit Pistons taking on the Atlanta Hawks. So Detroit will get the first possession. Now a chance, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. The starting five on the floor. On the court for the Pistons, Joe Dumars is out there with Thomas. Then there's Hill, then there's Wallace, and it's Lanier in at the center position. Now here's Wilkins. And that one hits back iron. That's a shot he's got to hit. You don't get many looks better from that range. And the shot goes down. Hill's got the first points on the scoreboard for Detroit. Hill showing good strength there. I like how strong he is. Even when you knock him around a little bit, he's able to stay with his shot effectively. Here's Hudson. Five on the clock. With the fadeaway. Offensive rebound. Here's Pettit. Sinks that one from the post. And the focus of Pettit, really impressive. I mean, love watching him score over the defense, especially this close to the basket. He doesn't waste any opportunity. Now here's Wallace. Knocked away. And that's out of bounds. Detroit will retain possession. against Wilkins Hill drives in that shot off and Atlanta will go the other way with it And we're about a minute and a half into the first quarter. Pass to Hudson. Let's the three fly. Hits it from three-point range. Hudson's got his first three points of the game. And he's not going to miss that sort of an opportunity from deep. Poke loose. Let's it fly from 18. Kept alive by Atlanta. Outside Wilkins, six on the shot clock. Over Thomas. Wilkins can't get it to go. Well, I like the defense there. Right up in his grill, didn't give him a chance. Here's Dumars, and it's wide right. It's off the rim. 
Boy, the defense had gone to sleep, so you got to knock that one down. It's stolen by Hill, and here we go. The Pistons fast break. Here's Thomas. It's good. Only a few seconds into the shot clock. Yeah, the jump shot of Thomas. Cash money, Kevin. Boy, it's nice seeing him knock down that mid-range jumper. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Alder. Thanks, Kevin. I did speak with the Pistons head coach for a little while. He told me he's looking forward to the matchup tonight. It's their first time against this team, so he is curious to see what his guys do on offense. He said it's important that we're aggressive defensively, that we use our length and shot blocking as a deterrent inside. We'll see if they can be successful tonight. Kevin, back to you. David, thank you. Do you think that's the right approach, guys? I don't think it's ever wrong to focus on defense first. It sets a tone that can last for an entire game. Yeah, that's the most surefire approach to use, guys. I mean, because they don't want to get into a shootout today. I mean, if this becomes a defensive battle, they'd really enjoy that. Atlanta with the ball after the basket by Detroit. Stolen by Dumars. And we're just over three and a half minutes into the first quarter. Pass to Lanier. Back to Thomas. And it's blocked. Here's Hudson. Wilkins trying to get open. A nice shot by Hudson. Hudson's got five points so far. Just dynamic playmaking. Wilkins sees the court better than anybody, and he never misses the mark with his passes, always right on the money. And the Pistons decide to take their first timeout right here. Yeah, you know, some of it's shot selection, some just bad luck, and they just can't get anything going. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, they've been a bit unlucky. Some of it is poor shot selection in a slump, no doubt. But it can be turned around. They just need to find ways to score the ball. Hudson against Dumars. Thomas feeling it out a bit. That's basket number two with his third shot off to a fast two for three. And though Thomas is great from the perimeter, he has a toughness and a willingness to go in amongst the trees and, and kind of mix it up. It's stolen by Hill. Jumps up and Hill throws it down. And that's up-tempo basketball at its best. So much easier to operate in the open court when a steal triggers the break. They get a hand on it. That's going to be over and back. Not watching for the line that time. And if you really want to make things hard on yourselves, this is exactly how you do it. Turnovers on back-to-back -back trips down the floor. Dumars against Hudson. Hill has the open look. Misses off the left iron. I guess even he has to miss one of those once in a while. Poked away. Here's Hudson. The kick out to Wilkins. Wilkins passes to Hudson. And there it is for him. Hudson's got seven. And if you're the guy who has to guard him, it is never going to be an easy night for you. The pass to Lanier. Outside Hill. Passes to Thomas. Six on the shot clock. Goes up to the stripe. The shot misses. Good D by Wilkins. He feeds it to Matumba. 
One up, one down. Two points with his first shot this game. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Yeah, and it's really fun to see that kind of unselfishness. Really hard not to appreciate all the assists they've racked up. Hill kicks to Dumas. Hudson against Dumars. Wilkins trying to get open. And again, it's Atlanta. Well, I tell you what, I like the clip he's shooting at. Extremely effective. If you're on defense now, you got to get the ball out. out of his hand. Now a timeout called by Detroit. And with the tide running against them, needs to talk it over with his guys. You're exactly right. Halting the other team's run momentarily. Let's see what he comes up with now, Greg. there. Prince outside. Kicks it to Billups. Outside, Rodman. Nice ball movement by Detroit. And that one's good. Bing. Here's Big Smooth. Pass to the great. And T is going to pick up the foul. That is his first foul of the game. <laughs> on defense, Detroit. They trail by three. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. And Sweet Lou can really kill you with that jump shot of his. That's why they nicknamed him Sweet Lou. That jumper is wet and like cotton candy. Sweet. And the first one at the line is good. And Hudson drops them both. Just solid. Really one of the very best there is at the free throw line. Pistons trail by five. Now Billups, outside, Rodman, back to Billups. Beautiful dish, and the layup goes down. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. Here's Big Smooth. He's guarded by Billups. Now the pass to Big Smooth. With the shot, and he drops that one in. And the Hawks lead by five. Here's Billups. The dish to Lambeer. Pass to Bing. He kicks it to Lambeer. To the left wing. Just five to shoot. Bing can't hit. The Hawks leading by five. Here's Hudson. He's got 11. <laughs> Passes it to the great. Fires for three. Another three for Atlanta. This is as good as it gets for a first quarter in terms of shooting the basketball. Greg, you're exactly right. I mean, everything seems to be dropping. Impressive scoring here. Oh, and a fast break for Atlanta. Here's Big Smooth, and that basket pushes the lead to double digits, and it's a 10-point Hawks lead. 
And taking a quick look here at the hustle stats for the Hawks. And it's been about their defense. They're playing with a frenetic pace, putting a lot of pressure on the ball handlers and forcing turnovers. Something else they've done right so far from the get-go tonight is, is run. I mean, so much of their offense has come off the fast break. Here's Hudson. Pass to Big Smooth. Another three for Atlanta. And already with the commanding lead, a terrific offensive performance. Yeah, and the execution time and time again, right on point. They're running their offense to perfection. Now here's Prince. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Kicks to Lambeer. Prince up top. He's covered by Willis. Three on the clock. Misses and the dry spell continues. The Hawks leading by 13. Here's Big Smooth from 11 feet away. Rebound by the Pistons. One second separating the shot clock and game clock. Billups passes to Prince. Power down with both hands. Boy, I like how Chauncey Billups looks to share the ball. He's a sturdy point guard with a great feel for when his guys are open. Big Smooth, seven points in the game. The pass to Horford. Here's Big Smooth, and the last shot of the buzzer doesn't go in for him. And so it's Atlanta. Their lead at 11 points to end the quarter. They're playing a bruising game inside, and it's working for them. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I'll be weak, I'm rather unique. <laughs> 